Today's webinar is titled Exploring Thermal Conductivity of Polymer Thin Films Using the Measurement Platform TPS Method. I'm Angela Balasavichis, your host for today, and I promise to keep things heated, but not too hot to handle. In today's session, we're diving deep into the world of polymers and composites. Have you ever wondered about the thermal properties of those ultra-thin polymer films? Well, today's your lucky day. We'll be unraveling the mysteries of measuring thermal conductivity using the transient plane source, source method for films as thin as a strand of hair to those as thick as a credit card. And for the cherry on top, we'll be showcasing the prowess of both conventional TPS and the avant-garde transient thermal resistance, TTR, by testing Teflon films using the MP1. Now, let's talk about the star of today's show. Introducing Dr. Jagannath Sripada. With a PhD in mechanical engineering and a penchant for thermal physical testing, Dr. Sripada is the Sherlock Holmes of thermal properties. From metals to ceramics and polymers, there's no material he hasn't investigated. With over half a decade in the field, he's dabbled in everything from thin coatings to micrometer sized particle synthesis. And if that wasn't enough, he's also a published author in several peer-reviewed journals. Talk about a thermal detective. So just a reminder, folks, we've carved out, carved out some time at the end for a Q&A session. So if a burning question pops into your mind, don't hesitate to drop it into the chat box. Dr. Serpata will answer the questions at the end of the session. So let's grab our thermal mugs, sit back, and dive into a world where things are always heating up. Over to you, Dr. Sripada. Excuse me, Dr. Sripada, I think you are muted. I cannot hear you. Hold on one moment here. Okay. Hey, thank you, Angela. Uh, uh, so my apologies for the uh, technical glitches that we had so far. Uh, without further ado, uh, let's jump back into the presentation. So, uh, hello everyone. Uh, thank you for attending the presentation. I'm Jagannath Sripada. I'm an application scientist at uh, Thermtest. In today's webinar, we'll see how we can measure thermal conductivity of polymer thin films using transient plane source equipment. So, before we begin, uh, let us look at the structure of the today's presentation. So, we begin with introducing polymer thin films, specifically Teflon and Kapton films. Uh, this is followed by introducing the prevalent steady state techniques for testing polymer films and the ISO standard uh, that is used for thin film testing as well. 
So we then introduced the novel transient thermal resistance method. This is developed at therm test. Uh, this is also for particularly for thin film testing. Uh, this is followed by illustrating the results we obtained for thin films using both the ISO standard and the transient thermal resistance method. We conclude this webinar by comparing and contrasting the results, and there will be a Q&A session at the end. A short description about myself. Uh, I completed my bachelor's and master's from uh, India, and then I came here to do my PhD to University of New Brunswick. So for the last one and a half years, I've been working with ThermTest over different projects, particularly involving polymer composites. Currently, my work at ThermTest involves thermophysical testing and analysis of different materials, ranging from metal, ceramics, and polymers and their composites. So again, in today's webinar, we will be looking at the what polymer thin films are, what are the methods to test them, and the results that we obtained for thin film testing. So what do we want to measure thin films? So thin films are extremely versatile, both mechanically, electrically, and thermally. So because of this versatility, they have a broad range of applications as adhesives, tapes, device components, coatings, structural elements, and many more. So in all these applications, it's quite important to understand the thermal properties of the materials. So to gain insight on the internal structures, the bond line thickness, the what's the thermal stress tolerances are, and also look for new avenues, for potential application avenues. So given all this, we are primarily interested in the thermal resistance of these materials, from which we can determine other thermophysical properties like thermal conductivity. So one of the films that we test today is Teflon. It's a polytetrafluoroethylene. That's the chemical name, but more commonly known as Teflon. It's a synthetic polymer. Uh, it was accidentally discovered in DuPont labs, and it, it became a household name for its nonstick applications in cooking pans. But beyond this uh, most well-known application, Teflon also has a wide variety of applications due to its properties like uh, corrosion resistance, it's used as an anti corrosive lining for metal components in oil and gas, or gaskets, seals, and pipes in chemical processing for its uh, chemical inertness and thermal insulation films, and wide variety of applications basically. But the reference thermal conductivity of this Teflon film is around 0.297, and the thickness of the Teflon film we tested for this particular presentation is 85 microns. The second film is also another product of DuPont's R&D. It's called Capton, and it's a high-performance polyimide film. It's used in like quite advanced applications. It's a high-performance uh, polymer. Capton films are typically electrically insulative. They're also chemically inert, and the most important property is that they exhibit thermal stability over a broad range of temperatures. So, in the because of this broad range thermal stability, their applications are also like range from cryogenics to space applications, flexible circuitries, and traction motors in high-speed rails, um, etc. So Capron Films has a thermal conductivity of around 0.46 watt per meter Kelvin. And it's manufactured in sizes ranging from roughly 10 microns to as high as 150 microns. So for this particular webinar, we used 50 micron thick Capron Films for testing. So going to the thermal conductivity measurements. So there are two approaches. One is a steady state approach. The other is a transient approach. So in this slide, we give a brief overview of steady state thin film measurements. For steady state thin film measurements, there are two prevalent standards. One is ASTM E1530 and the other is D5470. One of the aspects or the key aspects of steady state measurement is that in steady state thermal distribution, the temperature remains unchanged with time. So both the ASTM E1530 and D5470 require the samples or the testing films to achieve steady state to carry out the measurement. This typically takes around half an hour or so, or longer sometimes, like one hour or even longer. So the one of the aspects of this measurement techniques is the long test times. And in addition to this, a specific temperature gradient needs to be maintained externally for the testing. So this is achieved by using the hot plates on the top and 
hot plate on the top and the cold plate on the bottom and the sample is placed in between them and across the sample we measure the flux and temperatures at different locations these are all used for calculating the thermal resistance the next thing about this steady state testing is that calibration is a must so reference testing for cal instrument calibration needs to be carried out every single time and it also makes this technique not not an absolute technique for measuring thermal resistance it also neglects the film film contact resistance so contact resistance between film and contact surfaces is assumed to be negligible uh, in the final aspect of this is that it requires a minimum thickness for testing so typically for ASTM 1530 you need 0.5 mm or 500 microns thick samples and for the ASTM D5470 at least 50 micron thick samples are required so the ASTM standard recommends layering in case the min minimum thickness sample requirement is not satisfied so for example you have a 10 micron thick sample and you want to apply ASTM D5470 you need to take five of those samples and layer them up so it reaches the minimum thickness requirement of 50 microns Secondly, layering also eliminates the thermal resistance between film and contact surface. So the standard recommends using contact agents like ethylene glycol between the layers during layering. This is this recommendation is to ensure that if there are any air pockets or undesired surface effects between layers, all these things are taken care by the ethylene glycol addition. The second approach for measuring thermal conductivity of thin films is transient plane source method or transient thermal analysis. So in transient thermal analysis, we determine variations in temperature and its associated thermal quantities with time. In transient plane source method, we have a nickel spiral, a double spiral shaped nickel foil, which is sandwiched between a capped on uh, insulation and the sample is basically placed over the sensor and heated to measure the temperature rise as a function of time. So the sensor has two functions. Number one is that sensor acts as a heat source. So the heating of the sample, the heat required to increase the temperature of the sample comes from the sensor. And also the measurement of the temperature, temperature rise is also carried out by the sensor. During testing, uh, a constant temperature offset is generated over the capped on film within few milliseconds of test. And this constant temperature offset is the basis for thin film testing. Now, some features of this testing is that it's a transient type testing and the test duration is within 10 seconds. So it's quite fast compared to the steady state methods. And the minimum sample thickness is again 50 microns. And the temperature of the testing is actually room temperature. So we don't need to maintain any external temperature gradients to perform this transient method. So also in the right side, you can see two images. One is a reference test and the thin film test. We'll talk about this in detail in the next slide, but an important point to highlight here is that transient methods also do require a reference test to carry out the experiment. So let's look into the thin film measurement uh, calculation procedure for a single layer, like what's the theory behind it. So as I mentioned before, we have a sensor and it heats up the sample. And during this heating, temperature rise is measured on the sensor. And this temperature rise measured on the sensor is basically sum of two quantities. One is the temperature increase on the sample. And the second is the constant temperature offset that is developed over the insulation in the very early phases of the testing. So as you can see here, so your delta T, the temperature rise on the sensor is basically summation of a constant temperature offset and the temperature rise of the sample. Now, what happens is that we use this temperature rise, particularly this delta Ti, to calculate the thermal resistance. So before we go any further, I would like to just define thermal resistance very quickly. So thermal resistance is the resistance of the material to the heat transmitting through it. So this can be uh, this is 
much more straightforward in steady state methods and also for the TPS influence. This is a straightforward uh, parameter to calculate compared to the direct thermal conductivity. So once we find out resistance, uh, conductivity is inversely proportional to it, and we can calculate the conductivity using the following relation. Here, delta x is the thickness of the samples. Now, when we perform, first we perform a reference test. In the reference test, we, will, we won't use any thin film. We simply just have our sensor with the Kapton film on the top, the Kapton insulation on the top, and, uh, and we place a background material over it. Using one time, so because the constant temperature offset is generated, we can use one dimensional Fourier uh, law to calculate the resistance. So we use the following equation to calculate the resistance. And from using this resistance, we calculate the thermal conductivity of the insulation. Then we add the thin film to the sample, to the whole setup, and we redo the test. Now we get a combination. Uh, a resistance which is a combination of layer and thin film. So we use that to calculate the thermal conductivity of the combination. Now, using this series model, we can deconvolute or calculate the thin film conductivity using this equation. So you get lambda plus H by lambda uh, combination from the thin film test. You can use that here. And you can use reference test value here. And you know the thin film thickness so using all these parameters, all you need to find out is the thin film conductivity. So these are the results for the thin film testing that we carried out with single layer. So for Kapton, we use a 50 micron Kapton layer. And the second one is a Teflon, which is an 85 micron uh, Teflon film. So we used two different backings. So one, we used a stainless steel as the backing. And in another case, we used a Pyrex backing. So we see that the results are not uniform and they are like quite dispersed over the range and they are also a little bit off from the reference testing. So that's why we implemented a slightly different strategy here. As mentioned in the steady state testing, ISO standard also recommends layering. Actually, ISO standard recommends measuring films of different thicknesses. That's their exact recommendation. So this can be achieved by using layering because if if you want to measure a thickness of 50 micron 75 micron 100 micron you, you don't need to manufacture different films so you can take a single film and you can take multiple films of same thickness and you can layer them up and you can still get this recommendation you can still satisfy the recommendation so layering basically also gives a strong relationship between thickness and resistance uh, once we layer the samples and measure resistance at different thicknesses, we can measure thermal conductivity using the following approach. So you can plot the film thickness as a function of corresponding measured resistances. And typically, they should exhibit linear relationship. If they're completely deviating from linear relationship, please reconsider your experiment and uh, make necessary changes or look for any uh, missing elements. So once you see this uh, once you plot this thickness as a function of resistance and use a trend line, you can use the trend line to determine the slope of the line, which gives you the thermal conductivity. Now, the current ISO 22007-2, the standard that's we, that is used for measuring thin film thickness, um, thin film conductivity, has few drawbacks. Number one is that reference test is a requirement, so you do need to conduct two different tests for one measurement. The second thing is transient plane source method. Uh, the sensor, when it propagates the heat, it propagates it in three different dimensions. But we use one dimensional steady state uh, equation to determine the resistances. So all the radial heat that is being not considered or the, all the loss that is going away from the sample is not accounted for. So these are the second drawback. And the third one is that there is a contact between sensor and thin film and also with the thin film and the background material. All these contacts also have specific resistances, which is called thermal contact resistance. And all these effects are again neglected in the current standard. Uh, so we still use the multiple layers to reflect, like to show that how the results can change. So now we can see that the results are much more closer to the actual values and 
you can also see that uh, the layers do exhibit a linear relationship. So the slope basically gives the thermal conductivity uh, as I shown in the previous slide. Now, the latest method for testing thin films and the primary focus of this presentation is the transient thermal resistance thin film method. This technique and the physics behind it is completely developed at term test R&D. Now, we also, a uh, few things about the uh, TRTF module, we call, the, we call it the TRTF module, so transient thermal resistance thin film module. We, it's, it's again a transient test type and the duration is again five to 10 seconds. But the minimum sample thickness is, it goes far beyond the current ISO standards or the steady state standards. So it goes to much lesser thicknesses. It can measure much less thicknesses. And again, the temperature of the testing is carried out. Everything is carried out at room temperature. So it's room temperature testing. No need for any temperature gradient maintenance or anything like that in the steady state methods. And the most important thing is we don't need to do any reference testing. And all the calculations and the data acquisition and the analysis is carried out using Term test uh, signature platform, measurement platform. Uh, this is also completely developed in house at Term test. Now, let's look at what this transient thermal uh, TRTF module is. So, we basically, it's the experimental configuration, it consists of a one dimensional stack. It has a thin film and a sensor, and it has two cylindrical steel pieces. So it's a symmetric configuration. So any, everything on the top above the sensor is again repeated below the sensor. So it has a cylindrical steel piece, which is of 25 mm length. And it also has a steel slab, which is 3 mm in length. And the thin film is placed in between them. The TPS sensor of 10 millimeter radius is placed it, uh, adjacent to the steel slabs. Now the thickness of the sample should be negligible compared to both these pieces. So with this setup, we have, we introduced a separation between sensor and the thin film. So we completely eliminated the contact resistance that is prevalent in all the other methods. So it is also like a one dimensional testing. So the, all the radiative heat losses are accounted for or completely eliminated from the testing method. So the model of this method actually utilizes the transient equations. So for the TRTF module, we measure the thermal flux and the temperature at each region using the 1D heat equation. Uh, and the boundary conditions, they are implemented over the thin film, so near the thin film region, uh, to calculate the resistance of the thin film. The resistance is calculated using a nonlinear fitting algorithm. When testing multiple layers, the total resistance is additive so you can add them up as in the as i shown in the iso standard but it's important again to see that a linear relationship is actually existing between the total sample thickness and the resistances uh, so the procedure followed to carry out this measurement is I, i'm giving you a short description of that so first step is that you align the stainless steel substrates with the uh, using this alignment tool then you lower the brass weight. Uh, this brass weight is basically designed to create a constant pressure. Uh, so once you lower the brass weight, you can zero the thickness with no film. And then you add the film and repeat the whole calibration and the lowering the brass weight procedure. And you can use the measurement gauge to measure the thickness of the film. You, for the multiple layers, you repeat the same process using ethylene glycol as a contact agent. So these are the TRTF measurements. So again, we plotted thickness as a function of resistance, and we we use the slope to obtain the thermal conductivity. Here also, we can see a very strong linear relationship between layer thickness and the measured resistance as compared to the previous tests. So here, we are basically comparing uh, ISO standard testing with different backings. One is a steel backing, the other is a Pyrex backing with the TRTF module. I mean, it's pretty clear that TRTF gives us the most accurate results of, of the all the tests we did. In conclusion, I would like to just uh, compare TRTF with two different methods we discussed today. One is the steady state methods. So TRTF has like short test times, 
it doesn't require any temperature gradients and everything can be carried out at room temperature no calibration is required and when you compare trtf with the iso standard again there is no need for any reference testing there are no radial heat losses and as shown in the previous slide we have higher accuracy results if you are further interested in knowing about this trtf method so we have a bunch of resources over the in the contest uh, uh, our page on youtube so you can subscribe to it and you can look at the demos uh, where uh, our uh, president dale explains everything in clear detail how to perform testing from a to z and we also have a another webinar that's explaining the physics behind it in depth and uh, we also have a short video describing how to actually set up the sample in life uh, thank you very much. Uh, so I'd also like to highlight that there are many people involved in this project and I would like to thank them for making this happen. This is an effort of many people, many physicists, many application scientists, and uh, particularly the marketing team that helped me with all the presentation and everything. Thank you. Off to you, Angela. It was excellent, Dr. Sripada. Now, I do have a couple questions. I put them in the chat, but I'll ask you here, and maybe that will spark somebody else to ask a couple questions as well. Um, so does the ethylene glycol that you use as a contact agent between the layers, does that impact the test results at all? Uh, uh, that's a good question, Angela. It does impact the results uh, in a better way. So if we do not use contact agent between the layers, all we have there is air gas. Uh, and the air has like much lower conductivity than ethylene glycol. So ethylene glycol has like 10 times better conductivity. So obviously 10 times better heat transfer. Uh, it also helps in closing up those small air gaps, particularly that's uh, one important thing. And any contact resistance that we might get from this ethylene glycol is eliminated when we do multiple layers from the intercept that we get from the line that I showed. Okay. Um are there any other applications for the TRTF or is it just thin films? So, so the, the whole idea behind TRTF is to develop a method. Uh, this, this is not, there is no solution for what I'm about to say before. So the develop a method that can measure contact resistance in situ. So there are no existing methods that can do this. So other applications are like, for example, if you have adhesives, these are very tricky things to measure and uh, without using a direct contact between sample and the adhesive or sensor and the adhesive you can actually indirectly measure the contact resistance and the conductivity of the adhesives uh, also like um, any um, you can also measure thermal contact resistance between two similar or dissimilar materials using the same method also like freestanding films that we have shown this is also another application yeah this is an evolving study there will be many more applications uh once we figure out we will again come back and speak about it yeah <laughs> uh, does anyone else have any questions so far we don't have any other ones in the chat i think everybody else has the uh, level of education to understand everything you're talking about more than i do but that's okay. I will be here to ask the questions that maybe people don't feel comfortable asking, right? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Like, uh, uh, yeah, thanks a lot, Angela, and uh, I really appreciate your help in this. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for giving this heartfelt session. It was incredible. And I'd like to extend a thank you to each and every one of you that joined us. And Thank you all for supporting us throughout these webinars. And for those of you who are always hungry for more knowledge, and I know you're out there, here's a little teaser. Our next upcoming series of web webinars will be delving into the fascinating realm of nanomaterials. So keep an eye out. You can sign up for our email list so you can get firsthand knowledge as the webinars are coming up. And if you have any questions, if something sparks your brain later on today, feel free to just send us an email to marketing at thermtest.com and we can connect you with somebody to answer those questions for you. So once again, thank you everyone for being a part of this journey. And thank you again, Dr. Sarpada for taking the time to give this presentation. And until next time.
keep exploring, keep learning, and remember, stay 